I'm Brent James, Intermountain Healthcare's Chief Quality Officer and head of the Intermountain Institute for Healthcare Delivery Research. I first met Dr. W. Edwards Deming more than 20 years ago. Dr. Deming was the father of quality improvement theory. His ideas had radically transformed manufacturing around the world. He had shown how, in many circumstances, better quality can actually reduce costs, the time, effort, and materials that go into a product or service. For internationally competitive manufacturing industries, if you couldn't do Deming, you just didn't survive. You could not begin to compete with the high quality and low costs of those who did. At the heart of Deming's approach was a key idea. He defined a process as a series of linked steps that produce some desired result. This simple concept describes all useful work that humans or machines perform. He added a second important idea. There is a difference between the theory about how something works and how it actually works. He called this fundamental knowledge. At a practical level, it means that the only person who truly understands how value-adding work actually gets done is the person who does that work every day. If you follow this chain all the way to its end, it means that everyone has two jobs. Your first job is to execute work processes to produce value-added products or services for others. This is what justifies the salary you earn. Your second job is to improve the way you do your first job. After all, you are the person who is best positioned to do that. No one understands your own job as well as you do. No one is better able to improve your own work than you are. One part of process improvement has to do with process failures. When a process fails, it can damage the health results and services that we provide to our patients and other customers. Process failures always waste resources and increase costs. They usually feel like hassle and frustration to the staff involved. They are very common, often to the point where they blend into the background. They can be so routine and expected that we don't even consciously notice them. In 2005, a team at Intermountain Healthcare developed quality observation tools to identify process failures in everyday work in our hospitals. Much of the research was performed by Dr. Jane Wallace, a nurse researcher, Dr. Lucy Savitz, a senior scientist in the Intermountain Institute, led the team. We were funded by the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality to conduct a study of the cost of waste and poor quality in healthcare. At the microsystem level, we use Toyota production system, sometimes called lean thinking tools. Using those tools, we observe 62 hospital staff in various roles and functions across 72 hours of time. And what we found was about 35% of frontline hospital staff time is wasted. Now when you think about the kinds of waste that we observed, think about hassle factors, those things that frustrate you or make it difficult for you to do your job and do it the best that you possibly can. Now, when we applied our estimates to the data for a 46-bed inpatient hospital unit, the potential savings is about $1.7 million. That's a big opportunity to remove waste from the care that you're providing and provide it much more efficiently. These tools are available to you. You'll learn more about them in 100% participation. And we invite you to use the tools, apply them to your own work, and eliminate waste from your own work. Our ability to deal with these sorts of problems is central to our service to our patients and coworkers. Intermountain Healthcare's senior leadership have identified it as a key strategy. Intermountain has been nationally recognized as an example of a healthcare system that is providing high quality healthcare at costs that are some of the most affordable in the country. We're grateful for that recognition, but each of us knows that we still have many opportunities for improvement. That's one of the reasons we're excited about the 100% participation project. It will help us find ways to provide even better outcomes for our patients while making the care we give safer and more affordable. 
As an Intermountain colleague, you have a very important role in this process. We are asking you to help us in three ways. First, by recognizing problems as opportunities for improvement. Second, by working with your coach or manager to determine the root causes of those problems. And third, by taking accountability for helping to fix those problems you've identified. 100% participation is about sharing good ideas on how we can make our work more effective, more efficient, and less costly. No one understands, better than you do, the work processes you perform each day. And there is no one better equipped to identify ways we can improve those processes. We need to remember that change is a team activity and improving our performance requires participation by everyone involved. We have a noble mission to provide extraordinary care and we're committed to providing even better care tomorrow than we do today. So thanks for all you're doing and for your willingness to help us become the model health system we aspire to be. The purpose of this training series is job number two. Some people call it data-based problem solving. We call it 100% participation. It means that everyone is involved in designing, measuring, managing, and improving their own work processes. We have prepared a course that teaches the concepts and tools of data-based problem solving. The course consists of five short modules. Each module is self-contained, but builds on the ones that came before. In, in other words, they work best when you do them in order. Each module ends with an exercise, a hands-on application of the ideas and tools contained in the module. The tools and ideas contained in these modules are simple and straightforward, but time and experience have shown them to be amazingly effective. We ask that you first view each module in order. Each is purposefully short. None of them last more than 15 minutes. Second, after watching each video, debrief. Your supervisor will act as your 100% participation coach and lead the debrief session. Others in your team who have also watched the video may join you. This will give you a chance to ask questions and clarify concepts. You will probably find that listening to others who do work similar to yours gives you ideas and insights about your own work. Third and finally, complete the exercise. Apply the tools outlined in the module to your own work. Your coach supervisor will be ready and able to assist you. With a little practice, database problem solving is surprisingly easy. If it hasn't already, I predict that it will quickly become a central part of how you think about your own job and how you work together on your team. These tools help people take better control of their own work life. They tap into natural creativity. They can make your time at work much more fun. More important, they will make it easier to better serve our patients, their families, and our coworkers.